Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti. I am MrPhotographer.com. A lot of the so-called critics hate selective color. They think it's juvenile or something. I don't know what they think because I don't think that way. If you like selective color, I say by all means, enjoy yourself and do it. And in this video, I'm going to show you how. We're going to start out with an image like this. I'm going to use selective color so just the bird has color in it. And we're going to end up with an image that looks like this. I'm going to be showing you two different ways to do selective color in Lightroom. And I'm going to mention a third way. And I'm going to talk about that right now. Uh, quite often, uh, I've read articles about the way to do selective coloring is to use the HSL panel. In my opinion, that is wrong. It won't get you the results you probably want. For example, I have this image of the cardinal. Now, most of the image isn't very colorful, but our cardinal is very colorful. And if you read any of those articles I'm talking about, you would go to the HSL panel go to the saturation tab and then you would bring down the saturation of every color except the color you're targeting. In this case we're targeting the red cardinal. And you can see when I do that it really just kind of washed out the cardinal and it's really not uh, indicative of what it actually looked like. Like there is before and there is after. So I strongly recommend that you do not use that method, that you instead use one of the two methods I'm going to show you now. The first method is involves the brush. And I should say what you should do, or what you could do, is process your image from beginning to end as though you were just processing a color image. Uh, you could see I did some basic adjustments. Um, I don't think I did tone curve on this one. I added sharpening. So I did everything uh, that I probably normally would do to this image. Now I want to remove the color from everywhere except the cardinal. Now to do that I would use a brush. This is method number one. And what I'll do is I'll reset the brush by double clicking on the word effect and that will reset all the sliders. And all I really want to do is take saturation all the way down. Now with that what you want to make sure is that your auto mask is not checked to begin with. We're going to check it in a moment but at first Make sure it's not checked. And uh, density and flow are at 100. And feathering, um, I would say put it somewhere in the middle. Let's see how that works out. Feathering's not as important. And we're going to get a larger brush to begin with by using the right bracket key. You also could use that slider there. If you have a mouse that has a center click wheel or an Apple Magic Mouse, you could just move that wheel or drag your finger on the Apple Mouse to affect the size as well. Now what we're going to do now is we're going to remove saturation from everywhere I brush. So I'm going to start way over here. So I'm away from the cardinal obviously and I have a, a humongous brush to save some time. So I'll come in as close as I feel comfortable with with this humongous brush to begin with. Then I'll get a smaller brush and I'll come in and I'll get a little closer like this. So we're making sure we're getting rid of all that uh, color. I'm probably missing a spot. Um, what you could do is you could just hover over the little button and get the overlay. The red overlay shows you where you painted. You also could do go down here in the toolbar. Uh, that's this little strip of real estate that's right below the image and it's right above the film strip. Uh, if you don't see that toolbar, hit the T key on your keyboard. The T key toggles the toolbar on and off. So we could click there as well to keep that on permanently. Now what I'll do is I'll make sure that I get in as close as I can to Mr. Cardinal and make sure I'm not missing any spots. And then what I'll do now is now I'll turn auto masking on. The reason why you don't want auto masking on right from the beginning is because it tends to uh, leave little speckles of color and you don't want that. You want to remove the color everywhere. But when you get really close to, in this case, the bird's body, we're going to have to turn it on. So what we want to make sure is that that little plus sign does not touch the cardinal at all. So we're going to get in as close as possible uh, 
to the body of the cardinal, and we just don't want that plus sign to touch the body of the cardinal. So we'll go around like this, like this. I might have touched a little there because I was looking to my side not paying attention to what I was doing. I'll get a smaller brush and we'll come in here. You also could uh, adjust feathering as you feel that uh, see fit. Uh, in this case, I'm just going to, and you could zoom in too if you um, think that will help you. To zoom in when you have the brush active, hold in the space bar and the uh, brush will temporarily turn into the magnifying glass. Click with the left mouse button and you'll be able to zoom in. That'll help you save time. You don't have to close the brush down, reopen it, or do anything like that. So we're going to just do a really kind of a quick, messy job for the sake of this video. And while I'm zoomed in, I could make sure that I, I caught all these spots because I had feathering on. It might not be as strong in certain parts of the bird, but you get the idea. And let's, for the sake of argument, say that's good. I'll hold the space bar again and click another time, and it'll zoom out. So you get an idea I didn't do so well around the edge of the bird here, but I'll turn the mask off. I'll just click on that little checkbox there. And you also uh, could turn on and off the mask overlay by hitting the uh, O key on your keyboard. The O key will toggle that on and off. Okay, so that's one method of doing it. It looks like I might have missed it over here, but you get the idea, okay? So that's one method. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete this brush. I'm just going to make sure it's active by clicking on it and hit the delete key so we'll get rid of it. Now I'll show you another way to do it, which may be just a little bit uh, faster in some instances. In this case, we're going to use a combination of the radial filter and the brush. So I'll get the radial filter. I'm going to have saturation all the way down and uh, we're not going to invert the filter. And we're going to go like this. We're going to draw it out. We're going to rotate it. And we'll put it over our cardinal like this. Okay. And now what we uh, want to do is we don't want either, any feathering. So we're going to take that feathering all the way down. Kind of just get it so it's just covering our cardinal as much as possible like that. So now, because uh, the radial filter is affecting everywhere outside of the circle, I have feathering all the way down, so it's a real hard edge. We can see that it's black and white everywhere except around that cardinal. Now, I'll go to the brush. I'll make sure auto mask is on. I'm going to zoom in by holding in the space bar and zoom in. And what I could do now is come in and use a brush to get rid of the rest of the color that happens to be around. Uh, Mr. Cardinal. Now I'll just do it real quick so you get an idea. And uh, if you want to drag around while you're zoomed in, again, just hold the space bar in and then click and drag. And you could do that. So we could do this now. So this might save you some time on some types of images, this method, as opposed to just using the brush in, you know, 100% of the time. So. And that's it. I'm just going to come in here real quick. And let's just say that's good. I didn't do around here that well, but I'll hold the space bar in and click again. And that's it. That's again, a selective color, another way of doing it using a combination of the radio filter and the brush. And um, again, uh, I think it's a fun way, a fun thing to do, something a little artistic you could do to your images. And if you have a selective color image you're particularly proud of and you're on Instagram, I'd love to see it. So tag me on Instagram so I could see your selective color image. I am at Anthony Morganti on Instagram. And in the description below this video, I'll have a link to my Instagram as well. So you could easily find me there. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.